Hey there, hey there, Kingdom Kids. Miss Courtney here, and I am back with part two of this lesson series called Be Still. So remember, to recap last week, we learned about being still and waiting patiently, believing and not doubting, and rejoicing in God's presence. All of those had be still in front of it. So be still and wait patiently. Be still and, excuse me, be still, believe and not doubt. And then be still and rejoice in God's presence. Also, how many of you, darlings, how many of you took some quiet time last week? Hmm? How many of you did something nice? for someone or help someone in need. Hmm? If you did either of those, good job, good job. Good job, good job. G-O-O-D-J-O-B, good job, good job. <laughs> so good job for you, good job for you. All right, so we're gonna just roll right along. We haven't done that chair in a while. I feel kinda good, good job, good job. Hey, all right. So moving right along, today we are going to continue learning about being still, okay? You're probably thinking, Miss Courtney, what else could there be to learn about being still? Well, kingdom, like the internet, but better. The Bible has so much information in it. So let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so let's start with our memory verse though. It comes from Psalm chapter 46, verse 10 in the New Living Translation. That's the one that we're using. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Okay, let's say it one more time. Ready? Go. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Okay? That is your memory verse for this entire month of April. All right? Now, let's get into it. Excuse me. I've got the, the sniffies. Hang on. All right. And I'm back with you. Sorry I had to take care of the head little sniffies. I had to get rid of those so I can teach the lesson without my nose running. All right. So, point number one. As a, so let me back up real quick. So just like, as I said, just like the internet, but better. The Bible has so much information in it. So we're going to get back into it, learning how to be still. So point number one, be still and don't trouble your heart. Now our scripture for this comes from John chapter 14, verse one. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me now there are so many things that we put our trust in in this world so it's kind of crazy that we don't put our trust in god yeah i mean how many times does he have to prove that he loves us how many times does he have to prove himself to us his faithfulness his might his power his um ability to comfort how how many times does he have to prove this to us okay think of how many things that you put your trust in every single day chairs vehicles so well some vehicles <laughs> and people i'm so sorry and people <clears throat> and just like i mean though just those three things alone can change quickly they can break they can not start they i mean they can just let you down so it's a beautiful and awesome thing to know that we can trust in god who hasn't changed not one bit since day one okay well you know our day one because god's you know he's infinite he's been around forever but he ain't changed since day one for us okay 
So that is just an awesome and beautiful thing to know that we can fully rely on God for anything. And he just wants us to trust him. Trust that he knows what's best for us. All right. So point number one, be still and don't trouble your heart. All right. Moving right along. Point number two, be still and don't be afraid. Now, our scripture for this one comes from Psalm chapter 46. Oh, no, excuse me. Psalms chapter 56. The memory verse is from 46. But this is Psalm chapter 56, verse 11. I trust in God. So why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? Now, I want to add in verse 11 of chapter 46. That says, the Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. So let's do some vocabulary real quick. The word mortals just means humans. You probably know that from a lot of Marvel, all that kind of stuff. So the word mortals means humans, okay? Like you and I. So the scripture basically says, I trust in God. So... Why should I be afraid of other people? And then Psalm 46 verse 11, which comes right after our memory verse, says that the Lord of, he Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. So trusting in God, why should I be afraid of you? I got the God of heaven's armies right here with me. Hello. So that right there, another thing to trust him. We have so much power around us and in us we should not be afraid of other people or concerned with what they can do to us with God on our side we always have the victory amen so remember to be still and don't be afraid now let's recap the first two points so far so be still and don't trouble your heart. Be still and don't be afraid. I want to pause right here just to bring up a point from the last two verses. And I kind of already said it, but I want to dig into it just a little bit more with you guys. Both of them mention to trust God. This goes with our last lesson when we talked about praying and not worrying to trust God means that you're not worried about anything when we trust him we give it to him to handle situations troublesome people enemies and even our friends sometimes sometimes we just need a break from each other and you know God I need you to step in and handle this thing because me and her are not getting along right now you know so Hey, it's okay but just like we trust in other things in our lives we have to trust God that he will do what he says okay all right moving right along so I can get you to just a little fun activity for you guys all right so point number three we are here already point number three be still and rejoice anyway wait miss courtney hold on didn't you already teach this one well kind of last week we talked about quietly being in god's presence and rejoicing and how you don't always have to be loud you know we love to shout remember I was talking about this we love to shout and run about and wave our hands and you know give praise to God you don't always have to do that you can be sitting very quietly and rejoicing and praising God and also remember I brought up people that um, who are around the world where it's against the law to worship God out loud and so they or excuse me out loud and in public so they have to worship in the stillness of their home 
So this point is saying mm, something a little different. Yes, the word rejoice is in there, but this is saying just something a little bit different. Even though it seems like God doesn't hear you or, you know, you feel like your prayers aren't being answered and it seems like someone else is getting their prayers answered, rejoice anyway. Rejoice with them. Yours is coming. And you don't want to miss it by being mad or jealous because somebody got their blessing before I did. Uh, you don't want to do that. Okay? Rejoice anyway and rejoice with them. All right? So our scripture for the last point of be still and rejoice anyway comes from Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 17 through 18. Even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. So even though it looks like things in your life aren't going the way you planned, you know, and trust me, you're young. Hey, sometimes I feel like that all the time, but I want to be in God's will. So even though it looks like things in your life, in my life, aren't going the way you have planned, we have to continue to be grateful and always looking forward to the time that God has set for us. Remember from the last lesson, we don't want a microwave blessing. We don't want it quick, okay? Especially if we want it right. And God is right. He is just, and he knows what he's doing. So just wait on it, okay? It may not be our time, and we just need to learn to rejoice and be happy with others whom we feel are getting blessed before us. But that's never the case, okay? And it may feel that way, but yours is coming, all right? And with that thought of rejoicing anyway, I want you to repeat after me. What God has for me, it is for me, okay? It's actually a song, but understand that no one else can get your blessing. No one else can get your blessing.